Chapter 1. Home Alone. What happened to Christine Jessup was every parent's worst nightmare. It's hard to imagine the depravity that some men hide deep beneath the surface. When the nine-year-old arrived home from school, her mother had been out, visiting her father at the jailhouse. She would be alone for a couple of hours at most, but in that time, little Christine would be abducted by an unseen assailant. All the parents found was her jacket, which had been hung on a hook that was far too high for her to reach. Months later, her body was discovered in a farmer's field some 30 miles from her home. She had been stabbed to death, and investigators discovered semen stains on her underwear. It's hard to imagine the terror she experienced in her final moments, not knowing what was happening, never understanding the reason why. Local police had never investigated a crime so abhorrent, and yet they were determined to apprehend the monster responsible. Chapter 2. The Misfit What does a pervert look like? That was the problem facing the police, as they hunted for little Christine Jessup's killer. The Jessup family demanded answers, and the community was in panic. Hundreds of men were interviewed, yet few leads emerged. Fortunately, there was one name that had stood out to Christine's mother. Guy Morin had refused to assist in the search for Christine. In addition, he was known to keep bees and play the clarinet, which made him especially suspicious in the eyes of the police. He claimed to have only met Christine a few times, describing her as sweet and innocent, but added that young girls can sometimes grow up to be corrupt. Forensic experts identified that his hair sample was consistent with hair found alongside Christine's body. It looked similar under a microscope. Then, an undercover cop sharing a jail cell with Morin learned that his favorite movie was the one with red rum, which, as you might know, is murder spelled backwards. The evidence seemed overwhelming. The police were convinced they had found the killer. Chapter 3. Railroad Police can be like a dog with a bone. Once they get a suspect in their jaws, it's rare for them to let go of a conviction. After all, someone had to go down for the murder of little Christine Jessup. Guy Morin had an airtight alibi, having clocked out of work too late to have been the killer. But Christine's mother was already convinced of his guilt, and it didn't take long for police to get her to change her timeline of events. Despite this, the jury were unconvinced by the mediocre evidence presented. Morin was found not guilty. But in Canada, you can be tried twice for the same crime, provided the Crown can argue technicalities on appeal. Forced to endure a second trial, and with the prosecution having refined their case, Morin was convicted of murder. The Jessup family celebrated, as they held a misfit accountable for the murder of their beloved daughter. Just one year later, Morin was exonerated based on DNA evidence. Justice, it seemed, would have to wait. Chapter 4. Mens Rea Calvin Hoover was a friend of the Jessup family. When little Christine went missing, he assisted with the search effort. After her body was discovered, he even attended the funeral. And yet, despite his obvious proximity to the family, the police had neglected to interview him. Dark secrets eat slowly at your mind. After inflicting his hideous fantasies upon Christine, Calvin had to maintain the facade of a stable family life, even as his marriage slowly deteriorated. As there was DNA the constant fear grows, of being discovered, which he dulled with drugs and alcohol. Each day he would monitor the news in dismay as DNA technology improved. His life slowly descended in a spiral of bankruptcy, divorce, and depression. After Guy Morin was exonerated on the basis of DNA evidence, Calvin knew his time was limited. In the end, the police used samples from some of his distant family members to finally isolate him as the killer. But by the time they managed to track him down, Calvin had already taken his own life, escaping justice. He would now be remembered with utter contempt, even from his own family 